This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is the Rambo, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the, uh, it's, I always say the lovely music of Larry Bubbles Brown, his dulcet tones. Hello, Larry. In his all-girl orchestra, his, yeah. <laughs> and it was Phil Spitalny. Phil <laughs> Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra. Which I never saw. I heard my father talk about it. It sounded hilarious. Well, it's hilarious to watch a woman play a trombone, you know. <laughs> uh, there are certain, I mean, in, in, in the group. You ready for this? I, how do I remember this stuff? Jesus, I can't, uh, today I couldn't remember YouTube, Okay. Which I, but you can pull that out. I can't, I, and I'm thinking, what am I just to call? You, what, I don't, and, uh, you, uh, you know, and I can't come up with YouTube, but I can come up with Spil, Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra <laughs> featuring, you ready? Yes. Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> what was magical about it? I don't know. I don't know. They put it in a big box and it disappeared. I have no idea. You know. Yeah. So uh, th- th- those are uh, things from the past. I mean, I I think uh, Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra probably existed after I was born, but I think was gone by the time I had any sentient knowledge of things. But my father always made me aware of things that went on before I was born or early on in my life, and he always found Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra to be really stupid. You know. Well, I have to admit, I love the uh, the big bands were great that era. Yes, of course. But Phil Spitalny and his all girl. Now that that wouldn't fly today either, would it? Be very sexist. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't complain. I think about an all woman orchestra, however. But they should no. because what we did back then is we made it like, oh, this is really unusual. Nothing but women playing instruments. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I'm sure if Phil Spitalny had the chance, but the times weren't right, he would have made them topless. You know. So. <laughs> mm. But so well, that would have made the violin magical. Can you, can you believe we just got uh, five minutes worth of material out of something yeah. nobody ever heard of? <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm, you know, there's so many things that I, I reference uh. because I'm older. Uh, <laughs> that that I that nobody else would possibly understand. In fact, my friend Shecky brings it up, and it's a really good point. That uh, there are people out there today in their twenties who don't know about the Beatles. Really, just uh, don't know about them. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I certainly couldn't name all four of them. And probably couldn't name one of them. Because they don't care. They're 20. They were born in, uh, what, 2020, uh, 2001. So they have no reference to that. That's old, old stuff. That's like when I was growing up and I used to li- li- find out what went on in 1918. You know? So, I mean, uh, we, we tend to think, oh, when I talk about the Beatles and, oh, hey, what, what's your favorite Beatles song? D- don't ask somebody who's 21 years old, 20 years old. They don't know it. They don't remember it. It's not in their frame of reference. And they, they wouldn't know Johnny Carson. That's correct. Uh, because Johnny Carson stopped, what, 96 or something like that? 92. 92. Wow, I thought it was later than that. 92. Yeah, so they don't, you know, hey, I I think I heard about Johnny Carson. Wasn't he on before I was born? Yeah, uh, Dana Carvey's kid said, told me they heard of him, but they didn't know what he did. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, Shecky said, you know, no matter what you think, most people don't reference that. 
Now, I have a guy on, on the show, on this channel, who does a show, and he's always talking about stuff of, that he grew up with, uh, Perry Mason and blah, 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 and blah, and I'm thinking, boy, he's never going to get anybody over the age of 60 listening to this. <laughs> Perry. You know, uh, and I, I, I try not to reference that stuff for that very reason, but, you know, I suddenly realize there's no way I'm going to get a young person listening to this show. No. You know? Uh, I'm just, I'm like that old fart that's there, you know. Like, I'm thinking of doing, like, a show just f for old people, you know. Just, you know, why not? I'm old, you know. And the problems that we all face, you know. Like, my latest thing is that everybody's trying to get what little money I have left, you know, between, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> between lawyers and this thing and that thing. And it just, you know, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse, you know. So uh, I figure, uh, by, you know, that everybody's try uh, nobody minds taking the money from me. You know, the lawyer doesn't mind sending me a bill for $500 an hour, all right? Four hours. That, that's what how long it takes. These days it takes me to take a piss, you know. Uh, four hours uh, would cost me $2,000. Jesus. Right, and he, it, no compunction about writing it up and building the hours and so on. They know how old I am. I've told them we have limited funds. I'm on a fixed income. Blah 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 blah. Here's a bill for two thousand dollars. So everybody's trying to get money out of me, and I have money that's been banked up. Not a lot of it, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars, and that's about it. But man, they'll be able to eat it up in no time flat. Jeez. This thing we got going with the house, the apartment here, I thought it was over and done with in December when we made the deal in court. But no, uh, the landlord is going to court to, although he agreed to our our deal, okay, although there's some problems there, the, the other thing with the other guy that establishes the price that we're paying for rent on this apartment is going to go into uh, a, a, a appeal, appellate court. Uh, and uh, that could cost a lot more money because my lawyer says, well, I have to go there and make sure your best interests are watched out for. Oh, good. Go oh, God. How, how much is that? Well, I'm, I'll probably take about 20 hours. Oh, good. Are you 20, serious? Hours, 20 hours, as you know it, it's, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and everybody's taking money away from me, you know. And uh, I want my wife to stop working. I'd like her to have some, t not have to go to work every day and deal with that, you know. And and uh, we probably could could do it. But all these people keep taking money from me, the money that I never asked to spend. It's terrible. It's horrible. But anyway, that see those are the problems of getting older. Is that you're on a fixed income, and now everybody comes after you for money. And nobody thinks twice about, hey, how does this impact that older person? Human's greatest fear, running out of money. I wonder what the suicide rate is among old people. I think it's probably the highest, isn't it? I don't know, but I think people get to be like 80, 85 and everybody's taking money from them and they're getting low on funds and they just go, ah, hell with it. You know, how many more years am I going to live? And then you just take the pipe, you know? You get yeah, you get in the garage and turn on the car, you know. You got to do it just right. You got to die and have like a dollar in the bank. Well, here's here's what I was saying. To, uh, just, uh, who was I saying this to? I think it was Shecky the other day. I was telling him on the phone that uh, I said, I in a way, you don't want to know when you're going to die. That's something I think none of us want. You know, like, well, didn't you have a joke about that? You wanted yeah, to, wouldn't it be great if you knew what day you were going to die, but not the year? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's Monday, and every Monday you're you're <laughs> you're, yeah. you're waiting for it, right? Uh huh. But the the advantage to knowing what your expiration date is is that you then know, hey, here's how much money I can. If I found out I was only going to live till oh, let's say March, okay. I can plan it all out. Yeah, there's no amount of money I have, no many, no amount of hookers I could hire for that, <laughs> for that money. No, but I would, you know, you could go out and spend it all and leave nothing. I don't have to leave anything. I don't have any kids. I don't have any relatives or anything to want to leave money to. 
right? Same sure. thing with Marjorie. She's got an apartment. I told her at our age she should sell the goddamn thing because we're not going to live in it, and uh, you know the money would do better being in the bank uh, gaining interest or whatever. Right now, it can't gain anything because I'm losing money on the stock market. It's like tanking ter- terribly. But you don't. You pay. Are you, do you have stocks? Yeah, I do in the, my uh, retirement account. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I've been listening to some guy for months. He's been saying the market's going to go down fifty percent. It's incredibly overpriced. Oh boy. <laughs> So maybe you and have he to. Said, he said when it starts to sell off, he said the the, the indicator will be the top, the tech stocks will go first. The well, tech stocks are going right now. Yeah, they're the ones that are in trouble. I mean, I saw Netflix was down yesterday. Yesterday, the this is we're recording this on the uh, uh, on a different day than you're hearing it, folks. But yesterday they took a th- over a thousand uh, drop. Okay. A thousand point drop uh, to finish off about fifty points up. I mean, what a swinging thing that is, you know? Yeah, that's that's the Dow. Um, I mean, amazing, just amazing. Well, to show you, uh, when I started comedy, the Dow was uh, under seven hundred points. <laughs> that was the market then. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that it's higher than it's ever been doesn't mean that's good. No. You know, so. so it lost more points yesterday than it was, <laughs> than it existed in than 1982. Ever, ever existed, yeah, in 1982. I, well, I remember when I was, I, well, I don't know what it was when I was growing up, but I know it was very low, you know. It wasn't high at all. So, well, yeah. Uh, uh, but, but I... Uh, I just, uh, I, 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 so I just, everybody's trying to like drive me into the poor house, you know, and I don't want to go there. I'm sorry, you know. I And the other thing that bothers me is this goddamn COVID, and it bothers me for an entirely different reason than it probably would uh, uh, bother other people. It bothers me because um, we can't go anywhere. I mean, like Marjorie and I would love to go to Europe or do something like that. You know, just spend a little bit of money and go spend some time in Europe. We can't. You can't go over there. You know, and even if you could get into one country, you couldn't drive to another country. I mean, it's just terrible. Just terrible. So, how's COVID doing for you out there? It's it's. Uh, it it, seems like it's, well, everyone's getting the last version, but it doesn't seem to be very strong, so... Uh you mean the uh, the Omicron? Omicron, or the moronic is the... Uh, what? You can spell moronic out of Omicron. Oh, oh moronic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and nobody says, we don't hear about another one coming along. Oh, I'm sure it'll be there. I don't think so. I think maybe if we have variations, there'll be very light variations. Because Omicron is lighter, much lighter than Delta was. Yeah, this is supposed to supposedly end COVID. Well, I I pronounced it the COVID killer. That this is the one that everybody's going to get. They get a bad cold, and uh, then they're back to work. Okay? And now they have the antibodies in them. And, you know, I I was telling somebody, for all these people that have been refusing to get the vaccination, this is God's vaccination. Omicron. In other yeah, words, that's you, what I've heard. You're getting vaccinated whether you like it or not. Uh, but I don't think we recognize that, though. If somebody's had Omicron, we don't go, oh, well, you're suddenly, you know, you don't have to go without a mask or you can come into the restaurant and eat, you know. But yet they do have uh, the antibodies and they probably are are safe. Now, that doesn't mean they can't spread it to somebody else, you know. In mm-hmm. fact, you and I, since we've had our vaccination, if let's say we get a small case of it and we don't know it and we're walking around with it, we can spread it, even if we've had the vaccination. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, that's a lot of, uh, uh, boy, our world sucks, doesn't it? It really does. This has been the, la- the last two years have been no fun. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, and, and then you got all the political people and all these, these, these proud boys and all this crap. I mean, geez almighty, what kind of time are we living in? I mean, I mean, you grew up about what fifteen years later, earlier than I did. Yeah, so it was. Uh, I think probably in the fifties and early sixties, maybe American life peaked, and it's kind of been. Well, my father said it went downhill after Kennedy got shot. But. That could be a defining point, but I'll tell you. You know, people say that the politics are terrible in this country, but. I lived through the McCarthy era, and that was pretty terrible. I mean, those, that was horrible. Yeah, those were witch hunts. They were terrible, horrible witch hunts, which ruined people's lives because of of just mere accusations. And so, when you say it's terrible now, you know, with the Me Too stuff and the and the uh, you know the uh, uh, what do they call it the the whole thing where you there cancel know, culture cancel culture. Uh, that that's not as bad as what went on in the McCarthy era. It's close. I'll tell you, when they take a guy and they say, oh, he did this and he said this about a woman, oh, he can't ever work again. That's almost as terrible as McCarthyism. Yeah, or he said this and he said this 30 years ago. <laughs> he did a tweet. Can't let ten, him work. did a tweet 10 years ago. You know? Well, you know, 10 years have passed, and he's changed as a human being. And back then, he didn't think that was going to be anything anybody would complain about. I mean, you you probably had jokes in your act, which today you would not tell, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. And the things we said on your show in the 80s would be, uh, we'd be done for that. You know? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but Even though it was fine at the time. Well, yeah, well, the reason we told those jokes is because they were acceptable, yeah. Okay. Um, and because, oddly enough, they were funny, you know. I mean, I, I the most sexist joke I ever knew about a woman, about women, uh, today would get me thrown off the air. Uh, and, and that joke is, I'll tell it. Uh, I'm selling all my old jokes, okay? <laughs> Going out of business. Sale. Why do women have periods? Why? Because they deserve them. <laughs> now, uh, you know, is that sexist? I never heard that. <laughs> Is that sexist? It's, uh, uh, what was the one I heard? Uh, why is uh, why is your job different from your wife? After 30 years, your job still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Very which, good. Is, uh, which is uh, sadly true in most cases. <laughs> What kind of stuff did we do back then that would have gotten us in trouble? Uh, in other words, what could uh, they go back and say, Alex, remember when you did blah, 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 uh, cancel culture? What, what 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 would they be able to go back and get us on? We probably, if anything that would be considered sexist would be any jokes about women. So we had a lot of those. And How about your park at whore? Park at whore, even though that was... Uh, Meant for men as well. Uh, yeah, but it was a, uh, he was, um, uh, he did our traffic on the show. We should yeah. tell people who are not knowledgeable of that. And so anytime someone was blocking traffic, I'd say, park it, whore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I called them a whore because they were going to work, which is, if, <laughs> yeah, if you're going you, to a job you don't, you wouldn't go to if you weren't getting paid, but, you're a whore. <laughs> but to the cancel culture, you'd have to explain that one, right? Yeah. And you shouldn't have to explain comedy. No, when you have to explain it, it's over, yeah. Yeah. Um, I once said, if you have to explain it, it's not funny, you know. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's just, uh, uh, I just think you're right. I mean, I don't know what, but just the very nature. Like, my character on the air was kind of sexist, you know. Um, I kind of played it that way. But, uh, but you had very feminist leanings, so... I have very feminist leaning. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. I don't think we did anything racist, as I recall. I mean, my my attitude is, I mean, uh, you know, I love women. Who else would I? Yeah. Who else would I fuck? Um, yeah. You see, there's the kind of joke we would have pulled without the word "fuck," of course. Yes, but but we didn't do any racist jokes, right? I don't. I would never allow it. 
No. You know, and I wouldn't allow... Uh, you know, there was a time when we had AIDS was a big thing in San Francisco. I mean, it was people you knew were dropping like flies. Yeah, uh, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, yes. yeah. And um, uh, talk I, about COVID. That was <laughs> I, I had comedians come in and make jokes about AIDS and so on. And finally, one night I'm on I'm at home and I'm watching television, and they showed some guy with AIDS, and he had all these, you know, Carposi syndrome. Uh, uh, marks on his on his body you know the the big spots and he looked terrible and it was horrible and it was just agonizing you knew this guy they were showing on tv was eventually going to die but he was dying by a thousand different cuts you know and uh i said this is not funny i said and i went in the next day and i told every comic who came in for the next couple of months no aids jokes uh, and I, uh, the reason I came to that decision was because they were making AIDS jokes not because AIDS was funny, but because gay people were funny. In other words, most of the jokes had something to do with the fact that the person was gay. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. I, and I didn't think it was fun. to. It, you couldn't make fun of that disease. There was just no way that disease could be portrayed as funny. And I don't think any, you remember when I said it, and I don't think anybody minded having to follow the rule. No. You know. And I said, the only reason you're telling these AIDS jokes is because it's about gay people, not because it's about AIDS, because if it was about AIDS, you wouldn't be telling the joke. Um, and uh, Yeah, people were telling cancer jokes. <laughs> exactly. It, it's like the funny thing about cancer. Uh but uh, the only AIDS joke I ever heard that was funny and that I, that I, that I in fact, permitted for me was, um, what's the worst thing about getting AIDS? <laughs> what? Having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> that, I thought, was funny. Oh, you know, it had nothing to do with gays. It had, you know. Right, right. If anything, it was, it was a slight against Haitians. And I didn't think that I had very many Haitians out there in the audience, so, you know. But that was the only funny AIDS joke I ever heard that I would say was permissible. That was a good one, yeah. Everything else was, you know, ended up being a gay thing, so, you know. But, uh, you know, today your your act would change. What uh, uh, What's a joke you used to use in your act that you don't tell anymore? Come on, as long as we're set. Uh, we're, this is a closeout sale, folks, for Larry's jokes. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. There's just, yeah, I pretty much don't, you don't do, I don't do, I had so many hooker jokes, and those are almost gone, so. Yeah, yeah. So that you have no act left, is what you're I saying. I have no act left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Michael Richards now. <laughs> yeah, right. Which was the, uh, was that the first big cancel Culture yeah, I, guy. I, I'd say that was the big first big cancel culture. Uh, that was caught. On, that was caught on a cell phone camera. Yeah, uh, Weinstein was the first real uh, warning sign across the bow, because then you had Spacey, and you had uh, you had uh, Louis C.K. was like about the third, something like that, and Louis C.K. was nothing, you know. Louis C.K. pulled his penis out in front of a bunch of women, but asked them beforehand if he could. <laughs> which I think is the sign of a consummate gentleman. gentleman. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, um, uh, so, I mean, I, I just, uh, the, the whole cancel thing is just, it's so terrible that I think we'll look back on this as a horrible time. But the next time, there'll be something else coming up. It's only going to get worse and worse. Uh, there was an old joke that uh, I can't remember who it was, but it was on the Jack Parr show. And um, he said that show business is getting so b bad lately that I think eventually the ultimate act will be Carnegie Hall, a guy comes out on stage with a lawnmower and starts it up. <laughs> and that's probably what we'll be down to. That'd be the only thing permissible is coming on stage with a lawnmower and starting it up. Yeah, yeah, very sad. Well, listen, Larry, 
Gee, I love talking with you. You're the best. Okay. Let's hope we don't get canceled. <laughs> hope we don't get canceled or cancer, one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see you next week, Larry. We'll talk soon, yes. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, there he was, uh, Larry Brown, ladies and gentlemen. We love talking to Larry because Larry gets me talking, and then I talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah, show business. So, show business. Okay, so anyway, l- hey, listen, I got to tell you a story. I've been having a mysterious thing happening in this apartment. Every night at 10 o'clock, the lights start fluttering. The lights start fluttering. They went in like this. Oops, wait a minute. Let me turn on my lights. Oh, there we go. And my, my light, they say, now they're not fluttering. No. My lights started fluttering. And the ones on the walls back here, like the candles and the, the sconces and so on, in the whole apartment at 10 o'clock every night. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And I told my super, I said, there's something wrong with the electricity in this apartment. The electricity is making the lights flutter, but at 10 o'clock every night. It's, it's, and then it lasts for about three, four minutes, and then it stops. And for months, I've been trying to figure out what this is. Been trying to figure out what the problem was with my lights. Tonight, I finally figured it out. I go in at 10 o'clock every night before I do this show to make myself a cup of coffee, okay? And I use a Keurig, uh, uh, what do you call it? Keurig uh, 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 coffee maker. And I put my stuff in there and I start it up. I went out and I looked tonight and the lights were fluttering. And I went, nah, couldn't be that because it didn't draw that much power. And sure enough, when my coffee was through being brewed, the flickering stopped. So I suddenly I decided to make some more water, just hot water in there. And sure enough, it started. Fl- I finally figured out what caused the flickering. It's my Keurig. <laughs> it's been driving me. It's been driving me insane. Just absolutely crazy. So anyway, that's how exciting my life gets, okay? The other exciting thing is we're supposed to have a snowstorm tonight. They always say there's going to be a snowstorm, and then there's never a snowstorm. Anyway, let me admit, oh, there are a lot of people waiting to come on tonight. Oh, yeah, now you'll love me. Uh, Let me see here. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. There they go. You see, they're all popping up. Oh, and uh, hey, Brian, you you got your problem again with your camera. Brian with his colonoscopy. It looks like like a bad Looney Tunes opening. Uh, You know the thing. Anyway. What what is that that happens with you, Brian? It happened last night to you too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, my, my curry. I think I'm brewing coffee right now. <laughs> so coffee makers have a heater in them. Well, you can either water. you can either blame it on the curry or Jeff. You know. And uh, coffee makers typically do draw a lot of amperage. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people run their toaster and their coffee maker on the circuit. And it blows the breaker, and they wonder why. Well, no, I know that. But I, I I, can operate my microwave and my coffee maker at the same time, and I don't have a problem. If, microwave doesn't it, draw a lot of power. Uh-huh. Oh, it does. Absolutely does. Are you out of your mind? Uh, every well, time I ever had any kind of circuit breaker blow, it was because of coffee, ma- because of uh, microwaves. Really? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. If I turn on my microwave and I turn on the, uh, and Marjorie would make it some toast, forget it. We had to go down and turn, uh, and reset the circuit breaker in the basement. In San Francisco at my apartment house, if I turned on the coffee maker and something else, I had to go downstairs and replace the fuse. And in those days you had those screw in fuses, you know? So. No, you're wrong about that. What? What? Now, what? What? What was it, Brian? What caused that problem? Bad toast. No. <laughs> last night. Last night. Last night it was a technical issue. Tonight I forgot to plug it in my laptop. 
the camera. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Now, now, uh, also, uh, I notice you have a door again. Yeah. Yes, with a hole in it. So I still have to, you know, this, and then I look over there, and then I still look over there. No. Remember, you said I couldn't jerk off. So that's, and also, I have a door, but I just got to keep looking at the hole. Yeah, and also, <laughs> also, you had that uh, that uh, sexy little dancing girl that came in. Oh, yeah, she, she's uh, playing games with Stephanie. So she's... Yeah, Adrian, uh, last night was uh, it, all she was losing, all she didn't have was a pole. Okay. Yeah. You know, she, uh, she, she's a little, she's just a real ham, isn't she? Yes. She lo she's going to be a performer. Hams and a handful. She is, she is going to, she, I think she's going to grow up and do something in show business. I just be think, believe that. Yeah. You know, she, now she's been on stage a couple times now. She had a competition thing last, last weekend mm -hmm. and she just loves it. And then, um, yeah. And then, you know, we met this, this really, really old, uh, my friend's father and he's very old and Asian. He looks like the Ho Chi Minh look, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's, you know, he looks mythical and, and he talked to him and he met Adrian and he's staring at her and he said, she's going to be big one day. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really bizarre. Like sent shivers up and down my spine. You know, there's a group of us there. So it wasn't just like, you know, yeah. she just, came and he said that, you know, it was just bizarre. So yeah. well, she so, has a certain something now. Yeah. Uh, but I think that uh, she's, when she learns how to be a performer, which apparently <laughs> she is aiming towards being, yeah. Uh, uh p please you know encourage her and do get, do all the stuff she wants if she wants dance lessons give her dance lessons if she wants singing lessons give her singing lessons uncle yeah. alex is paying for it is what he's saying yeah no. right uh, and it's uh and the, the the studio that we go to is really good and they used to be down the street yeah and now they moved to campbell so it's like uh like 20 minutes away and uh, some classes I'm on meetings while I'm dropping her off and then I'll go in the parking lot and go on a meeting and then pick her up and stuff like that. So yeah. I mean, it's not big sacrifices. Do you hear, you know, a lot of parents. Good. Going but, through but, stuff but you know, just encourage her in that if she really wants to. I mean, yeah. don't force her to do it, but if she I, wants to do it, then do everything you can to encourage it. Yeah, I, I told her you used to be a big shot. Now, uh, I never asked you this, Tony. How many kids do you have? <laughs> Who? <laughs> how, kids? Many kids, how many kids do you Cat? have? I got two dogs. That's about it. Yeah. Coco and Pebbles. <laughs> Coco and Pebbles. Yeah, I. And I don't, don't do ask. Pebbles. Don't ask. It's probably one five. And the next one's going to be Scooby Doo. Okay. Actually, no. If I, I told Checky, if I adopt another one, my, I'm going to name it Patches. I think. Patches. Yeah. Why? Why Patches? True story. When my mother was alive, she kept having dreams of my grandmother with a dog. So I asked her, what was the dog's name? She says, Patches. So I always told my brother, if I adopt another one, I'm going to name it for Because she wanted me to name a dog Patches, so I figured I would do it for her. I just have to adopt a dog. Well, I, I don't know if you've gotten the memo, but she's dead now. And uh... I know, but that might keep on. I remember her telling me that story. So what was the dog's name? Patches. She said it so clearly. <laughs> She used to call me. I she she used to have the dreams in Who's, and who's like, wait, wait, now, do you want to hear this? Are you gonna tell me anything? Hold, hold on a second, Tony. Who sent him coffee? Who sent him coffee? <laughs> I did. Alan, I, he, sent me, did. he sent me uh, comics. That's a good book. You gotta read that. Well, I will. Good, I gotta yeah. learn how to read first, Tony. Oh. There's another picture. I'm gonna give him the cliff notes on Avengers Four. <laughs> Look at the pictures. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm hello. still in the Maxwell House, Alex, from Costco, $9. Okay, let me say hello to these other people, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh. shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, what's the sure say? It's Kevin. We got Kevin. He's, uh, he's uh, let's see here. He's there. That's Kevin. Hi, Alex. And then there's Jeff. He's there. And then Hi, over down there, that's uh, Alan. And this down here is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Why don't you reach up and we'll shake hands? Just reach up. Reach up out of your camera range. There we go. Wait, hold on a second. There we go. Okay. And then over here, that's uh, that's uh, that's Brian uh, down. Wait a minute. Down there. Wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta do. This is very difficult to do. Uh, down there. Oh, you do the fingers. Wait a minute. Oh, I see. If I go this way and then I go. Down there, it's very difficult to do this. Who's and, Alice tonight? That's just why. And, and then down there, all the way down at the bottom, that's uh, that's Josh. And then there's uh, 
Uh, there's uh, uh, John Larkin, and of course uh, the wonderful and attractive. Uh, what's your name again? Oh, Tony Magno. Who's Alice? Huh? Just forget me. <laughs> what? Who's Alice? Alice. I'm the Brady Bunch. You know Alice. Oh, was oh I see. Oh, oh he never gave well, you a day with him. Fall in. Uh, well, either that or this is the Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Could be that. Paul Lind and Wally Cox. You know, we should t start a game show soon and just call it the uh, the Bennett Squares, and then all you guys can call in, and then people people can call in and play the game. You know. Uh, uh, how you doing tonight, Kevin? Okay. How about yourself? Uh, good. Good. And you, Josh? Doing good. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see here. I think it was very funny. Our president today uh, went down to do a infrastructure talk. Where where was he going? Uh, huh? Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. And With he went bridge. down for yeah. it. Well, it, thanks for ruining the story. What happened? He said it already? Oh, I was just getting ready to listen to it. And, uh, you know, Joe Biden went down to, uh, okay. to Pittsburgh uh, to uh, do an infrastructure speech, and the bridge collapsed. It did? Yes. Yeah. Are you serious? I, I, mean, absolutely. I was watching Netflix. I, I can't. I, I can't believe he didn't. All the news today. I can't believe that he didn't send somebody down there to make it collapse. You know, because he was going down there to do that's it. That's a Dr Donald Trump trick. Yeah, that's yeah. a Donald Trump trick. Anyway, um, which bridge was it? Uh, I think he's money bent. What? I was buried in paperwork all day today. What, what bridge was it? Well, if you were there, you would have been buried in bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know nobody what. Nobody died, though, right? No, no, nobody died. Some people got injured, but not badly. Um, I don't know what the what the name of the bridge was. One newscast said the river swallowed a bus, a school bus. Yeah, there was a school bus going across it, but there was nobody in it oh. except for the driver, I think. Okay, he didn't count. Well, you know, that's something I've been bitching about for years. And yeah, look, here we are. Yep. Yep. Um, Roads and bridges. Uh, hold on. I just, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with everything. Okay. Just fed up. I don't know why. Just fed up. All right. I just, uh, I'm tired, sick and tired of everything. I'm sick. I mean, I see, I see roads out here in California now. They're working on this, these two bridges. Yeah. That's between. Gilroy and San Juan Batista out here on 101. Mm -hmm. These two bridges, I can remember, and I go over them all the time. And they're just bridges over the river. And I remember during the 89 earthquake, <clears throat> the day after the earthquake, I was driving truck going south. Mm -hmm. And I went over both of these bridges. And they're the old bridges, the old stone ones. Mm-hmm with the arches on them and stuff, yeah. you know, you know, they're the old ones. And I went across both of those and there was nobody on the freeway. And I had to take the South run and the South run was out of San Jose, down through Gilroy, Hollister, Monterey, Salinas and back up. And it was usually, you know, a three or four hour run, but that day it was probably about an eight or nine hour run. Cause they were running everybody out into the fields in Watsonville and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I approached these two bridges, and I had hit two buckles in the road already. Oh. And I came upon those bridges, and there was Caltrans surveyors all over them. Oh. And they're just looking at the bridge, and they got, you know, the triangles up, and they got the, the surveying equipment out, and their clipboards, and they're looking at them. And I'm about ready to drive over it with my 40-ton truck mm -hmm. and going... Okay, are these things good or what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't you get bonus points for running over the Caltrans people? Uh, they weren't in the street; they were under the bridge and on the side of it, looking at it. You know, so it's you know you have to go off the road. Well, to, supposedly um, this extra points, but you yeah. don't want to do that. Supposedly this not after an earthquake. This bridge, anyway. Yeah, yeah. This was 1989, no less. Yeah. Those bridges are now being worked on. What year is it? Now. Well, these bridges, this bridge that collapsed, <clears throat> has been slated to be fixed for 10 years. And in the this last is two years... This 1989, now the, we're in 2022, wait, wait. and they're starting to work on yeah, it. Yeah, well, in the last two years... 
such the, the bolts in it have rusted off and the bridge they knew the bridge was ready to collapse this thing had a buckle in it just before i went on to it that shook the whole freaking truck like no tomorrow it was like this mm -hmm. buckle in the road and i went over it like a speed bump at 50 miles an hour and it was probably this tall you mm -hmm. can't tell in here but it was you know this mm -hmm. tall mm -hmm. but it was it was a good sight and i bam 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 of course they just ground it down and put some tar over it and right and every time i go over that bridge i think about that day yeah and i go when are they gonna fix it when are they gonna fix it when are they gonna fix it and i i just went over it uh night before last mm -hmm. and they had all kinds of equipment on it and they were tearing it apart and both of those bridges are now being worked on really yeah and of course, because of the infrastructure bill and the SB1 stuff, but, you know, it just blows me away that it took that long yeah, for something like that to get fixed. And here you talking about president standing behind a bridge and it collapses. I mean, we're in the United States and we got the roads that are crushing the bridges that are falling through. It's ridiculous. Right. But even worse, uh, Highway 87 goes right downtown San Jose. It's like a and roller when they, coaster. When they finished that, it, it was like a roller coaster. 85 goes along this way, and there must have been some kind of thing before because it's so smooth. But this one was like a roller coaster. And you talk about all the money in, in the U.S. What about all the money in Silicon Valley? And, and the roads are terrible. Hmm. Hmm. Ridiculous. They need to tax the people that are making... Uh, a lot of money, more money, yeah, to fix the roads. Yeah, eighty-seven was a compact problem. They were they weren't compact. <laughs> let, let me bring road. let me bring up something to you that's an interesting uh, proposition that some people are are saying. And I know if Phil were here, he would have a cardiac if I brought this up. All right. Uh, on um, CBS uh, Sunday morning, they did a thing. I think it was last week they actually did it, in which there are people around who are now proposing that no one be allowed to have more, no individuals be allowed to have more than a million do billion dollars. Hmm. That, what do you need more than a billion dollars for? And that above that, it should just be taken away and used somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's well, why uh, do you feel that's horseshit? I mean, do you, do you really think that, for instance, what's, what's uh, Elon Musk worth now, about $220 billion? Yeah, yeah but you know, but but you're you're gonna stifle those kind of those kind of people like Elon Musk. But just tax them. Properly. I don't I don't think you're gonna I I don't think you're going to because what you're saying here is no you're not stopping corporations from amassing that kind of money and doing their work. You're just saying that no individual can amass more than a billion dollars. And I don't know why anybody needs more than a billion dollars. Can you tell me? Give me a good reason, Josh. Well, I don't know if anyone needs it, but if you're going to allow a government to make decisions like that, what's to stop the government path. from the next day saying there's no one who needs five televisions in their house? Yes. It's just my wife and I live here. We There's no way we could ever watch five televisions at the same time. We do. You can only have, you can only have one. That's where it starts, though. That's where it starts. Well, but yeah. you say that's where it starts. I mean, uh, so, okay, so so you have these people amassing enormous amounts of wealth, and among them, among the billionaires, they probably have 95% of all the wealth in the country. Is that right? Does that make for a, 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 a vibrant economy? I... Don't see it's wrong. I don't see I mean, a problem with it you know, either. They, they're doing the work to do it. They're doing the right yeah. stuff to do it. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't hold it against them. I don't go out and do that. I'd like to, but okay. Let me give you an example. Uh, 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 what's his name? The guy who was the head of uh, Facebook. He's got uh, many billions of dollars, and is he doing good works? Well, it'd be nice to see them yeah. do better things with it. You yes. know, the Koch yeah. brothers had billions. Nice to where see the, them be the properly Koch. taxed on it. Yeah, that's fine. The, but, what, no. they, what they say is the people with that kind of money start dictating the policies of whole countries. You like know. Trump. Huh? No, Trump. Trump. Uh, Trump was not a billionaire. Okay. In fact, the latest they have on him 
is that maybe he's got seven hundred million dollars if he's lucky. Yeah. Well, the, the guy, the guy with uh, Facebook, San Francisco General Hospital was in disrepair. Major, they couldn't come up with the tax money. Uh, who and came up so, with the money? <clears throat> he did. Or did her. Facebook come up with it? No, he came up with it personally. Yeah. His wife is a mm -hmm. pediatrician there, mm -hmm. which of course she's probably very popular. And but, the, uh, uh, yeah, it's called the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. He put in um, uh, 250 okay. million or uh, 7 billion or I don't know what to upgrade it to, to earthquake standards. Mm -hmm. They got a new hospital, a new ER, new surgery centers. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very nice. How come he had to name it after himself? That's what people do. When they donate yeah. that type of money, they, yeah. they get well, their name on the building. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. You well, know, nobody I, knows I just, who Alex Bennett is. I, I, if I had billions of dollars and I right. had to give $7 billion to keep a hospital uh, afloat, all right, I would give them the money because I want to do so out of the goodness of my heart, and I would want right. nothing back, including putting my name on it. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Mm. I've never had oh. the opportunity to put my name on a building other than a doghouse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what I would do. I mean, I never really thought about it. Well, I mean, it's just an interesting question of, of, of how much money do people have to have? I'm looking it up now. Seven hundred and fifty-five million is what he gave. Seven seven hundred fifty-five. That's all. He didn't even give a billion. I, I, he, he he was short that month. I don't know. No, but I mean, seven hundred and fifty-five million is it's a tax deduction for him. Uh, right. And then the guy, the guy from uh, the guy from Salesforce, uh, gave a bunch of money to the Children's Hospital. Absolutely. UCSF, and they, and they Absolutely. Named, they named more than a billion. More yeah, they, they named the hospital after him. Yep. I forgot the guy's name. Benioff. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty nice guy, actually. I mean, he's, you know, I mean, for, for a billionaire, he's a pretty, pretty liberal guy. You know, he's, he talks about, you know, getting homeless, you know, finding a homeless, a solution to the homeless problem. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and he's a pretty constructive, but he hasn't well, solved it. In some ways, though, are these 15 or 20 or 30 people that you know we might talk about here are they the real problem or is it more all of us i mean if you have that much of a problem with mark zuckerberg and what he does with his money and what he has or has not done for society or whatever then why don't we as people stop using his products but I dare say there's no one here that's going to uninstall Facebook and Messenger and I know I don't any, use it. anything else that he owns and say I don't like that guy. I'm done with him yeah. because I, they want I, those. I never I never open that thing. I got I'm on it, but I never even look at it. I don't. I well, it freaks me out. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's, I'm not blaming anyone. It's an individual uh, choice. Uh, I'm just saying, but no individuals are making that choice. They hate these guys, but they continue. You I just, you know what, I can't, I can't figure out. Using their services. I thought of, of all the billionaires, the poorest of them was Elon Musk. And all of a sudden, he's the richest one of them. Yeah. Where did it yeah, come yeah, yeah. Where did it come from? Well, his stock is It couldn't crazy. be from that, yeah. that, you know, Tin Lizzy Don't he's got stock. out there. What? Don't the biggest dick is, is, is Bezos. That guy's an asshole. Oh, nope. he's, he's terrible. He's a he's horrible a, person. He's an nope. idiot. Bezos. Oh, Jeff Bezos with Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that dude. At least he hates Trump, so he's got one yeah, good yeah. thing going for him. Yeah, I know. Well, Trump hates him because he owns uh, the uh, Washington. He hates the guy's laugh. Well, he hates <laughs> no, he, he, that guy's laugh. He hates him because he owns the, uh, the Washington Post. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. they write yeah. about Trump. Yeah. Or Trump. Yeah. So he, he doesn't like, like Bezos. But I mean, I just I, I don't know. I just think that uh, he, hearing that a guy's got two hundred and twenty billion dollars, I mean, I just don't know what you do with it. My, yeah. Charlie, <laughs> get in here and defend me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't. 
know what what you can need uh, over a billion dollars for either. I mean, like you said, there's no way you could spend it. Mm -hmm. You could have your own baseball it's, team and hire not, Charlie as a umpire. I think it's not the amount of money that you're making. It's the fact that the government will regulate that amount. And someone is telling you you can't make that amount. So you make a $2, two billion dollars. The government's going to come take that one billion and do something with it. That's the problem I have with what you're well, saying. Well, I don't think that that was the suggestion. I think what they think is that if people are limited to making a billion dollars, then when they make over that, they have to somehow siphon their funds elsewhere, like mm -hmm. back into the company. Well, then that you're going to have all kinds of shifty stuff going on yep. there. You're going to have stuff going on. But out you're talking about America. Ocean. You're talking about the way Americans do business. When you yeah. say shifty Which stuff. Is totally shifty to start yeah, with. Yeah, they're going to roll it out onto a boat in the middle of the ocean and let it float around and huh. you know, go into a Swiss bank account, all that bullshit. There was you know, a movie. rather have there, accounting for there it. There was somehow. a movie I mean, years ago called. Still not. Still, even even these guys with $24 billion, you know, they're still doing that. There was a movie that came out in the 40s. It was called Brewster's Millions. Uh, which I think they remade as a film they with remade. Richard Pryor. Yeah, and John what, Candy. And what the uh, what the what the premise of it was is that this guy was uh, given was uh, given a million dollars, which in those days was you know like a billion today, um, was given a million dollars, and he could keep the million if if he could spend it in a week, oh. or a month or something, but he couldn't spend it on himself. So he had to find ways of giving up money, you yeah. know. Um, I wonder if these guys were told, "Hey, you got a billion dollars now. Find a, uh, find places to put a billion dollars, you know, where your money isn't gonna do you any good." I'd put it in know, the, locally in the school districts that are poor. I'd, I mean, I I could spend a billion dollars in a week and not mm -hmm. on myself. Well, I would. But again, it's it's. It's almost some personal choice because I'm just saying that, okay, Microsoft and Bill Gates, Bill Gates gives his money away almost as fast as someone can print it, and people don't seem to care, but everybody just loves fucking apples. Apple's just great. You, all, you guys all love it. Oh, they're just, so, they will control your whole And they're the life. most, sell of all the companies. You let them and yeah. love them. And they do nothing with their of the, fucking of, the, money. of all the companies. They're not giving the, any of it away. They're the most selfish. Apple. Yes. Yeah. But you keep using them. Yeah. But I mean, Bill Apple Gates, products, the, yeah. the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gives more money oh, away okay. than he can. I mean, he literally can't find people fast enough to give it away to. Yeah. I mean, he. I mean. Oh, he's I don't very know. open about how much money. I, he I wouldn't be caught dead with anything that was made by Apple. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just happy that none of none of us would, you know. Well, I'm just happy that I got my 5G shot. You know, now I have my 5G. So. <laughs> you know, I was going to tell you, Alex. When I was reading on Apple, the one who was very generous was Wozniak. He was giving away his shares. I mean, he seemed very generous. Well, what was was a pretty nice guy. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, compared. Still alive. He was, he was no, but he was generous before. He was like yeah, he was still giving stock away to uh, to the secretaries because he felt they should have got in on it. Yeah. I think Jobs was more cutthroat as a business. Well, you got to remember the Wozniak probably made the least money of anybody. <clears throat> you know because I mean he, he had was a there. Lot of stock. He, he, he was had a, lot he, of stock. a lot of stock, but he uh, he was there at the beginning. You know, and uh, there was well, they a, were friends. They started Apple together. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Him and Jobs. Yeah. Yeah, but I agree with Josh. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they, when we were young, they gave us a lot of money for research for the TB, uh, tuberculosis for uh, Africa. So we gave it to them dirt cheap, and then we could still use that assay for, for regular, <clears throat> regular yeah, sales. They, they also fund a huge program for people who want to start teaching as a career change. So they, they have a program that I believe a lot in that says, maybe the best teachers in the world are not 23 year olds who just went to college for four years so they could be a teacher mm -hmm. maybe some of the best people that could teach are people that maybe went to college and then went out in the world and worked or whatever or in the corporate world or whatever mm -hmm. and then said man i'm a little tired of this but i'm 37 or 38 years old you know 
but in order to go get my teaching licensure, I got to do six weeks of an internship and I got to do this and that. None of that shit pays anything. And how am I going to change careers when I basically would have to go six months without income? Mm -hmm. And they've made it, they believe in making that possible and they will pay those people to do all that. And then to get them to go into the inner cities of Memphis or St. Louis or whatever, where the these school districts can only pay thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year, instead of asking these people to take a huge pay cut, mm -hmm. they will also then supplement their income from that, and in some cases, double it or whatever. If these people have master's degrees and things like that, to get people that have life experience and a lot more education into areas to teach kids where people with those skills would otherwise never show up, and you know they they fund that program a lot. I mean, that's just one of the many that, you know, that Microsoft gives away, well, not Microsoft, but you know, Bill Gates gives away. Um, so, so well, I think, I think Bill Gates has got his faults as a human being. I mean, you know, I think 60 minutes did a deal on that. You know, Warren I don't know. Buffett Maybe does the same thing. So, but, yeah. so what? Warren Buffett's not, not saving his savings up for his kids. He's a, he's a philanthropist. He gives he a lot of his money away too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but he 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 didn't give much money to his kids. Well, right. he's not going to give it right. to his kids. They can work for it, is what he says. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think that has to do with a work ethic on his part. He just I think feels that giving all that money to his kids probably will make them emotional cripples. I mean, uh, you know, him and him and Bill Gates do a lot of uh, philanthropy together. They formed a company, and they do philanthropy. Uh, I forget. They they bought uh, in 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 a couple towns that couldn't afford restaurants. They brought in Dairy Bell or or one of the ice cream and hamburger <laughs> places, and they give away the burgers and stuff to the all the people for free. Warren, Warren Warren Buffett owns Dairy Queen. Oh well, maybe that's why. <laughs> but yeah, they they opened up a couple of them in real poor neighborhoods. He owns he owns Seas Candy too. <laughs> Does he own Seas Candy? candy. Wow. Yeah, he, he by the way, by the way, mentioning Seize Candy, I, I mentioned that they did a thing on CBS Sunday Morning one Sunday on Seize Candy. Really? Uh, and that, that company's been in business forever. Oh, yeah. But people don't know what we're talking. Do you know, what, have you ever heard of Seize Candy, Tony? You know, I'd have to see it. I don't know. Would that be in New York? It's not in California. It's oh, oh, the way you said that, I have to see. Yeah. Uh, do That's you, not and, a and, New York company. My and, New York and, friends have well, me well, let, me, it let me finish what I'm saying here. Uh, uh, Josh, have you ever heard of Seize Candy? No. How about you, Charlie? Yeah, I've well, heard of them. Really? Where would you hear of them? We used to have them in the malls here in Texas. Oh, really? Okay, so they made it yeah. that far. Because mm -hmm. outside of the, uh, I thought they were only on the West Coast. But they had all these little white shops, and it was Seize mm -hmm. Candy. You can go in there and get a free sample. Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. You could. Yep, they're very popular in California. Yeah. Yeah, still can at the mall. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, everybody in California knows about them. You know about them, right, Kevin? Yeah, they got a place right there, a factory in San Bruno. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, but uh, out San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, right on the border there. Yeah. But if just be, you know. Um, I mean, it, for instance, Bezos. I don't care how much he does for philanthropy. I don't care mm -hmm. how much he tries to buy his ticket to heaven, okay? <laughs> he will always be judged by how he treated the people who work for him. Yeah. And they they are abysmal. And they don't like him. Oh, he's, yeah. he, he's a terrible. Bezos is <clears throat> terrible. I mean, I'm... For a while there, I was thinking about not ordering anything from, uh, from Amazon. Uh, yeah, because of the way they treat their people. And then I thought to myself, how else am I going to get anything anymore? I know. I, just, I love Amazon, though. I, I remember when he first opened, I was just ordering books. Like, I never have to go to the bookstore again. He has everything. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but didn't, you, didn't you worry about the fact that what that was going to do was kill the comic book store or kill the bookstore? You know... I did because I used to like going to the bookstore with my sister in Forest Hills. But you know what I, the one thing I liked about it is because we would come home, I says, Nan, they didn't have our books. 
And then when I went to Amazon, oh, look, they got the book on Amazon. Wait, and after a while. Just, just try and find a bookstore these days. All the Barnes yeah. and Nobles are closing I down. I mean, all the brick and mortar bookstores. I miss it. Yeah, I'm look, looking for stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. and, and uh, I mean, I hate how I am stuck with buying stuff from Amazon. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, I try to whenever I can. I do try to buy my electronics at Best Buy locally because at least there's some people yeah. working the stores and they're earning a living and I'm paying into that. And if I go in and say, here's what Apple, what Amazon's charging for it, they'll meet the price. Yeah, so, they'll match So I don't PC need to go to Amazon to get it cheap, you know? But, you know, I mean, uh, uh, th that always bothered me. Uh, Apple bothers me genuinely bothers me because let's face it i mean you were talking josh about you know people not buying stuff and uh, that would dictate the the well-being of people and so on nobody ever thinks when they buy their apple phone now what's happening to the uyghurs in china where this phone has been made you know so i mean um and, and the people, by the way, at the factory at Foxconn who kept jumping out of the windows committing suicide because they couldn't oh stand going to work every day. Imagine jumping out of a window because you can't stand your job and you quit. That's yeah. Why. Yeah. You're making it free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank God uh, Sirius XM didn't have any open windows. Uh, <laughs> you know. How big can you be? Guys opening the window again. There they go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, they had people jumping out of the windows at Foxconn. They 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 allowed them to live at Foxconn, and then they had these apartments there. They stayed in her dorms, and uh, people were jumping out the windows, committing suicide. So they had to put up nets. Really? They no, didn't do any, they didn't do anything to stop what was causing them to jump out of the windows. They just stopped <laughs> the them from being <laughs> able to kill themselves jumping out of the windows. So, you know, I mean. Uh, we're doing business with the very people that we're complaining uh -huh. about now, and uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 pr it's pretty terrible. Uh, as I say, I'm getting fed up. Shecky and I were talking the other day, Josh, mm -hmm. about the fact that we're both fed up with the world. I think it's just maybe we're just old farts. Okay, I'm getting like that and, too. Though, and, and he and he's he's older than me, emotionally. Yeah, so, he is more mature than you, Alex. I think you got to. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he tells me, "Oh, he's on the phone again." <laughs> mature was not the word I was looking for. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But he's a good listener. I could see you like he. I don't get you. Talk, I, yeah. Shecky and I, if we live long enough, will be like the two guys in the balcony on the Muppet Show. Yeah, yeah exactly. Remember yelling down? I like. I used to watch that. I yeah, was thinking more yeah. like the odd they couple. The stage. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, um, uh, you know, but I mean, he, he's complaining to me all the time now about stuff. And he says he just can't stand the world he's living in now. It's just, you know, and I tend to agree with him. I mean, how much worse can it get? You know, he runs again in two Trump years. can get reelected. Huh? Yeah. Trump no. can get reelected. He won't get reelected. He won't get reelected. Go to jail. But I don't think Biden's going to be any, in any position to run. Oh. Huh? I don't, I, don't I don't think he's going to be in in the physical condition to run. So what the hell is Pelosi think she's doing? She's running she's again. Doing. Can't she retire? You're gonna uh, carry you want to talk about she... retiring? Don't you think maybe Diane Feinstein might be thinking about yeah. walking to the Both door? Both of them should go. I mean, I mean I it's not like in ages, but come on. Well, I, I, I like Pelosi. I think she should stay, but definitely Feinstein. She she's getting a little. Isn't she bad. about ninety? Feinstein, Look, I can be ages. They should all go. Just go. I, 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 I can be. Better. I can be ages because I'm 82. Okay, I can be ages, and I got to tell you, I just think that I would like to see more young people in politics. When yeah. I look at Congress and I see all these gray hairs, I go, "Come on, they're the people who are voting on the future." And all they're doing is basing it on templates that have been set in the past. Yep. And we need people in there who are thinking more towards modernizing everything. You know? And maybe that's why we shouldn't have we should have term limits. So these people can't keep yeah, running and running mm -hmm. and running until they're like 
I mean, how old is, uh, how old, uh, wait a minute. Echo, how old is Diane, F Echo? I thought she was How dead. old is Diane Feinstein? Like 82, 83? Diane Feinstein is 88 years old. 88, 88 years old. Yeah, oh, I think she was close to 90. 90. That's, a That's what I thought. Wow. I figured she was close to 90. And I bet she runs for re-election next time. You know, I mean, I come on. Huh? I think she is. Think Why she don't you ask her. Alexa if she's going to run again? No, because she won't answer me on that one. Oh. She doesn't have answers. She's not a, a, a magic eight ball. Oh, you used to have that. Huh? I used to have that, the eight ball, you shake it up. Oh, I had a magic eight ball once. Every time you snorted it, another spoonful would appear. Uh -huh. Mine was my deal. <laughs> I knew that was coming. A magic eight ball. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a original magic eight ball? That kind of looks like a yeah. funny yes. magic eight ball. Yeah. 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 It's, it, 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 it's so original. Well, Alex Bennett lived to 83. <laughs> Not a chance. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't. It doesn't actually. It's a little whatever the liquid is in there, and it, it doesn't pop, it doesn't work. Well, it's it's not an original. You've got a defective magic eight ball, and yeah, you're, can you believe and, that? And and you're and you're holding on to it. I'm that way, you know. I like old balls. <laughs> Uh, yeah. A ball one at a time, I guess. Yeah. And the damn thing doesn't work yet. Yeah, it is defective. Yeah. But Rarely, Alex. Anyhow. No. So I somebody somebody sent me a picture that they had posted on uh, the Quake uh, uh, Facebook group of me in the studio at KQAK in San Francisco, and I put it up. And I just said, would you believe, and it's right, this is 39 years ago. Wow. Wow. And did you see me do the PR work for you, this show? Yeah, right. I saw you on there. But do you realize? <laughs> the, guy would say, the guy would say, oh, he's the best. And I said, he's still the best. Join our podcast. <laughs> I got, is this on I got, Facebook? I got, yeah. uh, so far, something like. Well, wait a minute, I can tell you. Uh, hold on a moment. I will go here and I will revamp it here for a second and see how many people. I put up this picture, just a simple picture of me uh, from then at a microphone. Uh, and I, it says, uh, you know. 162. I, I said, uh, yeah, 162 people have commented on it. So 12 that. shares. Yeah, yeah. So 39 years ago, the quake. And, wow, uh, I mean, yep. you know, that's a bad day for that makeup girl. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? So? That's like a makeup makeup girl gets that like in the first hour. Oh, oh, you, you mean got, one of the? Yeah, of course, no. The girls yeah. doing makeup, they do that in the first hour. Yeah. You have four hundred and sixty people that have given a thumbs up, whether they love it or the blue or the red thumbs up. <laughs> oh, really? really? Yes, you're right. Uh, 463. 460. Wow. I mean, I just put that up a couple of hours ago. God, you must be somebody yeah. still on that thing. Well, it's There were some very nice people saying stuff there. There's yeah. a lot of comments. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, just in case you haven't checked, we, we have a lot of people who watch the pop-up show. <laughs> anyway. These uh, people would just go on to watch the show. They, they, they think they're like they're surprised you're alive still. Yeah, they, that's that. amazing. You know, it's nice to know that people are amazed I'm still alive. You know, um, I I don't understand that. You know why they don't check in occasionally if they really cared about me to see if I was doing something. Actually, I prefer they not listen to this because this would probably disappoint them. Well, disappoint. <laughs> Disappoint them, wouldn't it, Brian? You used to listen to that. <laughs> one, yeah, one person said, "Yeah, but then he," because I said, "Join the podcast." I said, "Yeah, but then before he had a studio audience." <laughs> yeah. Where are we? I'll, I'll bring a studio audience in here, so that we can. Uh... There's one guy, Matt Morons, talks about Bobby Slayton rules. Seen him many times. Alex matched him up or something. I don't get this guy, uh, whatever. Whatever. Matched up with him. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Matt M Morgan. Oh, not Morgan. Matt Sorry, Morgan. Matt, if you're listening. 
I don't understand. But uh, anyway, you know, it's like I say, I used to be a big shot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would, would people, Brian, would people who listen to me then be disappointed by this? No, 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 no. Really not? Okay. No, because everybody's getting old, so everyone's yeah. changing. So it's not, it's just a different, you know, different version of everything now. If I went back to San Francisco tomorrow and did that show, oh yeah, they would expect me to do the same show I did back then, and you couldn't do that show today. No, I mean, look at the comedians. I mean, geez, you see, you show some of those pictures with you and uh, you know Robin Williams and Seinfeld and all those guys when they're young. It's like wow, it's like well, also, also the other thing is that I had a live studio audience. We couldn't have a live studio audience today. Right. Because no studio would be a large enough for that, or B, even if they were, would allow people to come in like that, you know. So yeah, everybody's putting their favorite Quake picture up there. I remember the Quake. I didn't know it was. You didn't on. know I was on it. No, I did know you were on it, but <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that it was still going on. Hasn't it changed names? No, it has been around for years. Right. Okay. It died no, it, real early. It only lasted a couple it, of years. Is is Live 105 still around? Yep. Uh, is it? No, they did away with the name. It's now got, they gave it some. What what was the name? Dave. Kevin? Dave's. Yeah, Dave's. Dave. Dave. That's the name of the station. Dave. Dave? Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The same numbers, 105.3. Yeah. 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 Dave. Yeah, That's and everybody, crazy. everybody was when they, here's what happened when suddenly they announced oh that Live 105 was going to quit being Live 105 and it's going to become Dave and whatever. Everybody was bemoaning it, saying, "Oh boy, an iconic radio station," which is amazing because when I first went on it, it was not iconic, but an iconic San Francisco radio institution is leaving the airwaves, and I have to point out to them that that whole format, that whole station was gone years ago. It just maintained the same name. But the quake was cute for the name since there's a lot of earthquakes around here. You know, like I was looking at the ratings today for San Francisco and the number one station in San Francisco is Coit, right? No, really? Yeah, yeah. K-O-I-T. They and, play oldies, don't it, they? Well, yeah, yeah but... No, they're uh, no, they're an AC right. station. So what's called an AC station, but in the old days they played beautiful music, right? And it was called Coit. So you're going to go all that. They have the picture of Coit Tower in the background. Well, of course, that's where the name comes from. <laughs> I, I figured that. Thank you. Yeah. Remember Brian Copeland? Yes. Yeah. So he he made a comment on here. But uh, his son, his son, I, I used to see him when they used to do the farmhouse. They used to do comedy at the farmhouse in Redwood City. Yeah. And uh, and Brian Copeland used to do that. But his son is the, they do the uh, opening for a KMBR in the mornings, so like the first couple hours in the sports thing. He's he's really big too, so. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah his son's doing really good. Good KMBR has always been the sports station, right? Yeah. In the Bay Area? Yeah. I, Not I always. Not, Not always. always. Right. Oh really? oh really? Only only in in about the past twenty five years maybe, but prior to that it was it was not. In fact, KNBR. You know why it's KNBR? It was KNBC. And down in L.A., K and the NBC station. I can't remember what the name of it was, but NBC suddenly decided they wanted to call the station down in L.A. that they own KNBC, so they changed this one to KNBR. Ah. Ah. Okay. So. Yeah. A little, little history. Uh, whatever. Thank uh, God we got that cleared up. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so what else is what else is new? What else is new? J uh, anything new today? Uh, um, um, Je uh, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Jeff. Uh, yeah, Jeff. What's new with you? Not much. I was starting with today. a J. I was going to say Josh, but go ahead, Jeff. That's all right. I remember my name. Uh, not too much. You know, it was a nice, beautiful day, and we just well, sat get around. and get used to it, because tomorrow's supposed to be hell. That's right. That's what 70, they say. 70 degrees here. It's yeah, right now, it's 30 degrees and snowing. 
How's it Boston, doing down Florida. where you? How's it doing where you are, uh, uh, Josh? What's that? How's the weather where you are? Well, it's about thirty degrees colder than thirty. It, it's zero. It's uh, pretty close. Yeah, it's going to be in another two or three hours all night. Zero. It was down to. I think it was one or negative one this morning. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> God, Brian, we're lucky here. When I was living, you know, when, it, when it's forty degrees in the Bay Area, everybody's bundled up. When We're I whining. Was, when I was We're living whining. in Houston, I knew this guy who knew a guy who had built a sculpture that was out in his lawn, and it was a monkey. And on the bottom of this monkey were these big brass nuts. Okay, <laughs> and he 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 electronically created it. So when the temperature went below 32 degrees, the testicles detached themselves and fell into a brass pot. <laughs> and when you knew it was cold, when all of a sudden you would hear clunk, and he would say, eh, cold enough to, you know, freeze the freeze testicles the off of a brass monkey. monkey. <laughs> That's funny. And I thought, what a great idea. Let's market those around the country. Just you put them on your front lawn in, in snow country, and when you hear clunk, you know how cold it is. But then you got to go back, back the next day and reattach the, the testicles. So, But you could do that. What's happening in your part of town there, uh, John Larkin? Have you been out to the, uh, the wonderful oh, tenderloin? I'm quarantining and everything's just... Hunky dory. Oh, how many more days do you have a quarantine? I, I think Friday or Saturday. Saturday. Now, you mean getting, Sunday. Now you're getting paid for this, right, John? No shit, no. S San Francisco. San Francisco has is initiating a new law. If you've had uh, all three shots, you will no longer be required to wear a mask anywhere. Yep. Yeah, right? yep, that's right unfortunate and uh, Fauci got really <laughs> mad at that saying that doesn't mean you're not going to get it that's right mm -hmm. you know yeah. I just think that that you know we're so desirous to get back to normal that we're trying to force ourselves back to normal and when we do that artificially uh, we're going to create conditions that are going to force us right back into having to close everything down if we were just to, we just take care of business for about a month all of yeah. us in this country yeah we get out of this but we're not getting out of it so you know the politicians are not gonna let us close down never gonna let us close down again yeah yeah so so it's better off that people die right hey we lost almost four thousand a day uh, today yeah again <laughs> 3,888. So what are we up to? What's the account and the amount, as they used to say on those quiz shows? Dr. Death. <laughs> Charles, 882,000. Dr. Doom, sorry. Something like that. I Charlie, Charlie, what's your shirt say tonight? That's a new one, right? Yeah, it's a new one. What? This is uh, one tectonic plate bumped into another and said, sorry, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Damn, boy. I wear my sarcasm shirt. Nobody cares about it. <laughs> no, we don't, actually. 882,213. <laughs> so we're, 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 when do you think, when do you think we're, we'll hit, uh, what, 900,000? 900,000 900, will probably hit by Valentine's Day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we're going to hit a million? Oh, yeah. heck yeah. Oh, yeah. People are going to have to get COVID shots probably for the rest of their lives. We're I, still, I don't know if that's the case. Well, we're still getting vaccinated for the Spanish flu, H1N1. Yeah. Is, is every it, year. Is it's H, in the mix every is year. Is H1N1 the Spanish yep. flu? It certainly is. But they're not making COVID mandatory for kids at school, so I don't see it happening. I think at some point. Well, how do you feel about your kid going to school, maybe not having to wear a mask or whatever? Mm. Mine? Uh, hmm? I think they still will. <laughs> Simon has that thing sewed onto him whenever we leave. <laughs> Mine too. Oh. 
Good for him. Good for yeah. them. My kid won't go to school without a mask. I mean, we had yeah. over 700 kids out and every day. I get a notice. As yep. a, I got to, two today. Every day yep. I get a notice that someone's been exposed. Wow. 700 kids out, 37 teachers out. Yep. Wow. Simon's mad because they're getting excuse from homework when they're out for COVID and he hasn't missed a day. And he says, it's not fair because he has to do all the homework. Same here. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't, uh, I got, by the way, I just noticed uh, Marjorie got them in today. We got a whole crap load of N, N, what, 95s? You know, which. Now you can practice yourself putting them on. Yeah, right. Are you putting that with all the toilet paper you have? I thought there was good. <laughs> I don't have a lot of toilet paper. You used to say that closet was full of toilet paper. Yeah, because but you, guys you know something? It. I got to tell you, I don't care how much toilet paper you buy in your lifetime. You could go out and buy, oh, I don't know, go to Costco and get the big the big rolls and get like 50 of those. And one day you're going to yell out of the toilet, hey, we ran out of toilet paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, used to haul truck, I, I used to haul truckloads of the stuff, and I always got extras and brought home cases of the stuff. I had my garage full of it, and I ran out. And, 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 guy, and, you know, that's pretty shitty. A single guy, I think, could use one of those for a while. Yeah. It's, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It's the women. The women. Oh, the women. The women. The women. It's like the jackpot thing. I said to Marjorie, "What do you do with stuff? Eat it." Like, you know? And then they don't refill the stupid thing, nope. man. That, oh my god! Or they put it in the wrong direction. Oh yeah, I gotta have it in front. Yeah, that's the worst. You like it in front? See, I like it that the hang from the back, and I've actually. You ever hear about? You ever hear? Houses. You ever hear about the guy? You ever hear about the guy that, that walks into a pharmacy and he says, "I I want uh, five uh, uh, tubes of uh, preparation H." And the guy says, "Okay," and he gives him five tubes. The guy leaves. He comes back about two hours later, and he says, uh, "Give me another five tubes of preparation H." <laughs> And he leaves. And another couple hours later, he comes back. He says, "Give me a, give me ten tubes of preparation H." Okay. And a couple hours later, he comes back again. And finally, the pharmacist gives it to him and says, "What are you doing with this stuff? Eating it?" He says, "No, I'm shoving it up my ass." <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite jokes. And, and the That's funny the part picture. about it is, you can screw that joke up so easily because you got to say it sarcastically. No, I'm shoving yeah. it up my ass. You know. But no, I mean, uh, toilet paper okay. is something you will never, ever not run out of. Okay? So I can, you can buy a ton of it and you'll still have it. I, we, we, we only buy a whole bunch of it at Kirkland, at uh, Costco now. And when we need Before it. Before we leave. Uh -huh. Are we going to see a 49er Bengals Super Bowl? We hope so. That's yeah, all I'm saying. So. I ain't saying no more. <laughs> <laughs> Bengals no, no, are going to lose I'm... again, right? It'll be the 40th year anniversary of the first one. That means, really? the, that means oh, the 49ers wow. would play in L.A. Two, 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 two times. Two, yeah. two times. And from the only guy in America who really doesn't give a crap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, this has been fun. It's been a good hour and a half uh it's, it's starting off with you kevin you're always wonderful jeff great having you here uh, the lovely and attractive uh, uh alan is uh, just fine and wonderful charlie wallace love you love your t-shirts brian she didn't come in tonight oh she's busy she's she's not in show business tonight uh, uh, uh josh thank you so much josh always love having you here uh, and, of course, John Larkin and Tony Magno. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. They are gone. They are toast. They are out of here. Let me just uh, let me just get rid of them here so that we don't have them still hanging around because they can go over now to Jack Bishop's show, which is the intersection, which is next over most of this gab net. We'll be back again on Monday for the uh, pop-up show. That will be on at uh, 4.30 Eastern Time on Facebook. Okay, not on YouTube, but on Facebook. 
And then we'll be back again here on Facebook and also just on our live audio stream uh, Wednesday night, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And more than that, please, get vaccinated, get the booster, and if not, wear a mask, be a good citizen. Anyway, we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye, everybody.